Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comics preview for March 28th. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. What do you got? Well, this week I'm going to start off with uh, Morning Glories. Uh, this is Morning Glories number 17. This book has been uh, interesting. More and more yeah. intrigue, and they're starting to get to, well, revealing some plot points. Oh, I mean, wow. I, I, you're starting to feel a what little is, bit sat, issue more is this? satisfied. This is issue 17. 17, we finally get some plot points. But everything else was was building uh, some character. Yeah. They were giving you some things you didn't realize. I felt satisfied after right. every issue, even though I didn't know what the heck was going on. And now I'm feeling like a little bit more is being unraveled, and we're seeing how people are connected a little more. Okay. So I'm, I'm digging it. Then we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number eight. I'm a couple of issues behind on this one. I gotta get caught up. Uh, I'm actually uh, wrapped up the other story arc and I haven't gotten into this one. So I have to uh, I have to get on this, but I've been really liking everything they're doing. Uh, turtles seems like they're getting a resurgence. Everyone's yeah. loving Turtles again, We're so much that. so that they found another reason to hate Michael Bay. Yeah. They don't mess with our turtles. The adult alien Ninja Turtles. But we don't know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> As, again, you know, there's... What I'm hearing is there's already, you know, uh, origins tying back to alien tech with the ooze anyway. So that might be a sound bite taken out of context. Yeah. And Michael Bay is just producing. He might not even know what's going on. But well, that's not to say that I don't think Michael Bay is a jerk that ruins our childhoods <laughs> readily. But well, let's take it easy before we get all mad just yet. He didn't do anything to my childhood. I never liked the Transformers. Yeah, I wasn't a huge Transformers <laughs> fan either, but people were fired up. Then we've got Aquaman, uh, Aquaman number seven. Um, this book is fun. Is this the uh, the Aquaman Justice League, basically? Yeah, pretty much. A bunch of uh, underwater superheroes. Pretty much, and there, but it's fun, man. Like, I, it's a cool book. Jeff Johns is telling some really, really cool stories, and has made Aquaman cool. Mm-hmm. He's not a pushover. You, you feel like uh, you know the villains he's fighting are pretty sweet. So you know he looks like Black Manta in here, and so yeah, all right, Good dig stuff. it. Uh, Daredevil number ten. This cover's amazing. That's a, a phenomenal cover. Amazing. I mean, look at that thing. Yeah. Um, pretty pretty excited about Daredevil as a whole lately. I feel like the book is just fun. He's fighting uh, the Mole Man. Yeah. You know, he's been fighting him for what a couple issues now here. So I I dig it, man. I think it's just yeah. cool, fun Daredevil stories. They got him away from being the the demon and the dark nonsense that he had been painted in the this corner. Is a, a happy Daredevil, and it's a print comic by Mark Wade. Yeah, wow. So, apparently he hasn't given up on print. Don't get me started on Mark Wade. Then we've got Avengers 24.1. Uh, Avengers uh, still being written by uh, Bendis. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. I'm wondering if we're going to get a little... Is this going to zip us into AVX here? This is a point one, so... Oh, next Avengers vs. It's, X-Men. It's setting something up. This, Yeah, this is probably going to be our setup yeah. here for Avengers. So you're probably going to want to pick up the, the point one issue probably going to be something you're if you're interested in what the avengers are doing in yeah. all this and interested in their setup it'd probably be something that you're going to want then we have new avengers this looks like it's just continuing what they were doing before yeah. this isn't the direct setup to although there might be some tie-in leading into but uh this has been cool you know this is another bendis book uh this is the one where daredevil's on the team uh we've got uh, scar on this team as well and this is the one that's uh dealing with the dark avengers yeah and the Dark Avengers are going to end up taking over that uh, Thunderbolt Thunderbolt. Box. So this is probably going to lead into that. Mm-hmm. Anything with an Avengers or an X is somehow going to factor in somewhere. Yeah, pretty much. That's like, that's all you're going to be inundated with. Your this, next uh, here. Then we've got Secret Avengers. And, yeah, what are they fighting in this thing? This is Rick Remender, though. So I'm sure he's doing yeah. a little bit of his own thing, and he, he'll have to tie it in a little bit. Um, you know, it looks like his next issue is doing its own thing. Yeah, this doesn't even look like this is going to tie into. These guys are a secret yeah. anyway. Well, this, uh, I think this does, uh, cross over. I think all but Is it going to? Yeah, I think so. Well, this issue doesn't look no, like it's a direct, uh, lead in. And how many more issues we got here? All right. Then, uh, American Vampire, Scott Snyder, who's, uh, you know, a, a favorite of the show here. This book has been awesome. I just really enjoy what's going on with uh, the, the storytelling and the way it zips through periods of time. And Their main character is, is Skinner Sweet, which is a great character name. Just mm-hmm. super cool. And he's a, he's a cool kind of redneck vampire. <laughs> and a new, uh, new, new form of the American vampire. And they're, they're just telling little story arcs and kind of going through various periods of time. And you're getting a, a, almost a better, better idea of, of who the characters are than if you just went linear. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like the way they're doing it. Then we've got All-Star Western, uh, another great book. Have they left um, Gotham yet? 
I believe they are. Uh, I believe they tied up the Gotham thing in the last issue, but I think they're still. Uh, yeah, they're still in there, and they're going to be making their way out. And there we go. Then we're going to get some. Ooh, Nighthawk and Cinnamon. Mm. Was that the backup story? Yeah, it looks like it. Well, that looks like fun too. It looks like we're out of Gotham. We're going to get into some some more just Jonah Hex stuff. It's like some bare knuckle brawling going on. DC Cowboys. That's what you get with this book. Yep, I'm all hence, about it. Hence the title. Yeah, All Star Western. Yep. What do you got there? I'm going to start off with Captain America and Bucky. Um, all right. This uh, this has been a pretty good book. Uh, definitely kind of falling below the other Captain America books. Uh, I'm really just sort of riding this out until it switches over to Captain America and Hawkeye and uh, okay. Colin Bunn takes over. Which is just in time for the movie. Just right? in time for the movie. Um, but this is continuing the... Uh, basically, it's the the second creation by the guy who built the hum- the uh, Android Human Torch. Oh, uh, right. Showing back up. His name was Adam 2. I think now he calls himself Adam 3. And uh, basically, he's just a cybernetic or a... a a uh, robotic android supervillain. In the last issue, he sort of took over the form of Captain America, and now he's going to uh, go out and, and wreak havoc. Uh, this book really has has suffered, I think, since that initial story arc, uh, which I thought was really good with Bucky. Yeah. Um, the second one has not been as solid, and uh, really the strong point is this fantastic artwork by Art Franco. It's incredible. Uh, Francesco Francovia, who is also leaving the book. So pretty much That's when, uh, when Brubaker and uh, Francesco are, are off the book, I'm probably off the book too, to tell you the truth. Uh, next up, uh, FF. Uh, you know, we had the wrap-up in, uh, yes. in Fantastic Four, so now this is going to uh, take it uh, hopefully in a new direction. Uh, again, it's got the kids. We've got... Uh, it's been some great Valeria stuff, Valeria looks like uh, she's got some answering to do. Uh, looks like we got some uh, Doctor Doom stuff in here too. So yeah, this is just uh, a great companion piece to FF. Uh, Hickman's been delivering on this title pretty much from day one. Yeah. Uh, next up, Moon Knight. This is number 11. We've got one more issue after this, okay. and the series is done. Uh, at the end of last issue, uh, basically the they're wrapping up the, the Ultron, Count Nefarious storyline. All right. Uh, Moon Knight pretty much just got beaten down seriously by Count Nefarious, as he should be. He was in the hospital... Uh, it's it's really kind of going a lot more into his his multiple personality issues. Okay. Seeing kind of uh, how much of this is going on in his head. Uh, it's good stuff. Bendis and Malieve really were not able to capture the magic that they had on Daredevil. Um, it, it didn't work here. It didn't work on Spider Woman. It worked on Scarlet. But, right. Uh, so uh, so yeah, they're it hasn't been doing as well. It hasn't been setting the world on fire. So uh, they're pulling the plug after twelve issues. It'll be a nice long storyline. Uh, third of one big trade. And, yeah, and it's you know kind of uh, establishing a, a West Coast Marvel universe. Uh, but yeah, after after next month, uh, this book is gone. Uh, next up, Mighty Thor. This is where we get Thor versus Tanneris. I'm really glad Tanneris only lasted for one story arc. It's not something that they really uh, dwelled on. But uh, Thor, uh, the Tanneris and the trolls ha- have launched their attack on Asgard. Right. And uh, now Thor is going to show up and, I'm sure, save the day. And some butt kicking a little ensue, I'm sure. Yeah, but Thor's probably not going to be too happy about them taking over his identity. Oh, certainly not. Man dies, comes back, and yeah. someone else has moved into his identity. Dies again. Uh, yeah, He yeah, just again. came back, and then he died again, and then someone else takes over his name, and, or not his name, is his identity and all that. Uh, next up, Uncanny X-Force. Uh, I've been singing the praises of this book a while. Yes. I actually have not been as thrilled with this Captain Britain storyline no. in Otherworld. Uh, maybe it's just the tone. It's got a little bit of a fantasy vibe. It's an interesting okay. idea that you take these sort of dark, hard edge characters, put them into a fantasy realm. I get what they're doing, uh, but I think the book just sort of uh, hasn't quite figured out its next big thing after they had that whole Dark Angel saga. Um, it's, it's cool. It's fun. It's a little okay. bit lighter. But, you know, I was enjoying this book for, for its darkness. And uh, as much as I love Greg uh, Tuccini as an artist, uh, I, I really would just like to see him paint you back. Uh, this book has been great uh, and getting better. This is The Unwritten. Uh, this is, again, a point five issue, so this is going to not focus on the storyline set in the present. This takes this is going to be a character, uh, one of the, the side characters. All the point okay. five issues are focusing on side characters. This book has been great. I mean, I finally got caught up, and now... I used to let a couple issues go by, 
But now that it's kind of really just chugging towards a climax, we're starting to get answers. We're starting to get explanations. Um, we, we finally found out who some of the characters are and, uh, and, and their connections to each other. Uh, this book is just absolutely fantastic. So I need to my, catch up. One of my favorite books on the stands right now. Next up, I Vampire. Um, this is liking that one. Uh, so far, this one is, is crossing over with Justice League Dark, which I did drop, so I don't know. Okay. Um, last issue had a big, uh, a big sort of blowout, um, where the uh, the main character is now some sort of a of a great vampire god creature or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. All uh, right. But uh, the artwork is fantastic. It's kind of a neat little slice of horror. Very, very firmly embedded in the DC universe. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see now that they they had Batman in here before. Now we've got the Justice League Dark. Uh, so yeah, pretty solid stuff still. Okay. Green Lantern: New Guardians again, continuing the Rainbow Lanterns. Uh, we got this Invictus character, a some sort of a sun god who's taken on all the different lanterns. Uh, still good stuff. Uh, I'm still not really sure what's going on. You know, we still haven't really gotten to the heart of. Why uh, Why this group is together, why Kyle is sort of off to the side. Um, okay. It's looking like Kyle is not going to be returning to the Green Lanterns, at least for a while. Interesting. So, uh, But yeah, I'm a Green Lantern fan. Uh, the artwork's been solid, so uh, I will stick with this book. This is one I've actually been waiting for for a little while, Superman number 7. Okay. Uh, the, you know, this this is a book that's that launched kind of, kind of shaky, and then there yeah. were some creative team uh, issues. This is the first issue by uh, Dan Jurgens, Keith Giffen, and Jesus Marino. Uh, Dan Jurgens, the man who breathed life back into him in the Dan, mid 90s. Dan Jurgens uh, killed him and brought him back before, but we've got uh, co plotted and scripted by Keith Giffen, who's been doing cool. some great job in, in oh, the sure. DCU. Uh, a lot of people don't like uh, Dan Jurgens that much uh, as an artist. I think he's uh, he's actually pretty decent. He's but, solid. But we've got uh, Jesus Marino, who is really one of my favorite parts of the book, still on the book, working over his layouts. And uh, and this look this looks good. The artwork looks fantastic. We'll see if they can uh, yeah. bring a little bit more life back to the Man of Steel and, and the the sister book to uh, Action Comics. So uh, that's uh, that's my stack. All right, well, I guess that uh, brings me to the top of my stack, which is The Walking Dead number ninety five, mm -hmm. A Larger World Part Three. Uh, the Walking Dead obviously is a huge cultural phenomenon yeah. right now. I have been selling more Walking Dead stuff than I can even uh, wrap my head around. Yeah. And the book is still solid. I love the the monthly title. Uh, right now, our, our group has found yet another group, and we don't know what's going to go on. Um, there's a struggle. Someone's got a knife to Rick on the cover here. So don't know if that's a sign of something going on or just what we what we fear the most, perhaps. Rick is uh, doesn't trust anyone. This character uh, has come into their world and said, we have a whole network. We, we were trading goods, and we've got this whole thing going on, and we'd like to invite you guys in. And, of course, Rick attacks them and... You know, ties him up, and Carl's telling him maybe this guy's not so bad. And they, you know, in this issue here, it looks like they've got to the community. Now we're going to find out whether or not these people are so bad, or does Rick just screw it up again? You know, uh, in in the in the TV show, Rick has already pretty much put his hands on his hips, and this is no longer democracy, and you're going to follow me, and this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> he doesn't really turn into that in the comic until quite a ways along, and then I mean, now you're really starting to see what this world is, is doing to, to our group and having it taking its toll on, on Rick. And let's see what happens in uh, in this larger world. All right. Well, uh, my top pick is uh, is pretty much the big gun, all the hype, all the uh, all of the cover banners, all of the complaining online. Uh, Avengers versus X-Men number zero. This is by uh, Brian Michael Bendis and uh, Jason Aaron which uh, means we've got a doubled up uh, header today. Uh, with oh, our, oh, wow. Yeah, we've got that. We got both of them up there. Um, we are, Yeah, I, I think, is Hickman writing part of this? Because uh, we got one for him, too. We might okay. have to scrunch down if, uh, if there's a Hickman book. Absolutely spectacular artwork by yeah. Frank Cho on this. Uh, it's zero issue, so obviously it's going to be set in some of the groundwork. Um, you know, we've got Hope, we've got the Scarlet Witch. It seems like a lot of the story is going to focus on those two. Okay. We know the Phoenix is coming back. Um, so, yeah, this has been a big deal. Uh, and actually, uh, you know, a lot of people have been complaining online. A lot of people arguing that we've seen this sort of thing before. And we have. The Avengers have fought the X-Men multiple times. Sure. Superheroes fighting superheroes is as old as superheroes. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to this. Uh, based primarily on the, the skills of the people involved. Yes. I know Bendis has, has gotten some flack lately. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I think he's still pretty, pretty solid in the stuff that I'm reading. I think uh, Fraction's going to be writing some of this, too, and a lot of people don't like his work. But, you know, the stuff he's doing on Thor has been pretty solid. Uh, but all in all, when Marvel gets an event right, they do a great job of it. Yes. Uh, so let's hope that we get uh, we get something like that here. They're doing a great job promoting it. Um, and, and one of the nice things is there's not going to be a frontline miniseries. There's not going to be a million tie-ins. We have the bi-weekly main title. We've got the AVX versus, which is just going to be big fights, which is a lot of fun. Sure. And then basically all the X-Men books and the Avengers books are going to tie in, but we're not going to get an AVX Hulk. We're not going to get an AVX. Right. Um, well, actually, it looks like most of the books on the stands are X-Men and Avengers anyway. But, uh, yeah, there's actually not a Captain America issue of AVX. There's not an Iron Man issue of AVX. So they've they've learned a little bit. They've scaled the tie-ins back to stuff that's nice. a little bit more important. So, uh, yeah, so don't really need to get all that stuff. So I'm on board for this main series. And, uh, and actually, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up, uh, including in the shop, for uh, the release of the real, yep. real issue coming up. So. Uh, the, the actual issue number one comes out next week, next Tuesday. Um, ordinarily, it would be Wednesday. comes out on Tuesday. We're yep. allowed to sell it uh, at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, April 3rd. So we'll have things going on in here. There's lots of variant covers, tons mm -hmm. of variant covers, some lithographs, some buttons. So we'll have that all worked out. But come in on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock yep. and pick up your number one after you get all hyped up with the zero. But one thing I'd like to say to all the people... Who, who are complaining that haven't we seen this before. Yeah. You know what, here's what I would say. It's a lot like, and maybe I'm going to lose my audience here with a baseball analogy, but it's a lot like interleague play. You don't really get to play all the National League teams all the time, even though they're there. And you know what, when the Tigers were playing the Cubs, you know, every year, then they take a break and they're playing another division. I, when we finally get back to the Cubs, I'm not going to say, well, we've seen the Cubs before. Mm. I'll, I'll have been itching for the Tigers to have played yeah. the Cubs again. And I think it's been long enough that the Avengers versus X Men's had like a, a, a duel, and they're in different places now. Well, yeah, the characters have done different things. Now let's see how they make them fight again. It's, and quite frankly, I like Capes and Tights fighting. Yeah, I mean, if you, the the last Avengers versus X Men miniseries was what twenty five years ago. Yeah. So how are the people? Could they like? They, oh, they we've were, seen this before. They're completely you know different teams. They're completely different creators. There's different teams, and there's a segment yeah. of our audience who that didn't happen in their lifetime. Yeah. So uh, all I care about is is it a good book? If, yeah. you're, if you're looking for you know real serious originality, you don't look for it at Marvel and DC. That's right. just kind of the rule. Uh, they can't to change get... too much because you'd complain if they did. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, if, if if Avengers versus X Men is not your thing, you know that's why there's a ton of other stuff on the stands. Read un, unwritten. Read Spaceman. I mean, Absolutely. New Dead Wardians, a new Vertigo book just came out today. Yep. So yeah, if, if you're not into in the superheroes fighting, there's plenty of other stuff for you. Absolutely. And this week we also got in, uh, if you've been reading Batman and loving the Scott Snyder mm -hmm. stuff, we got in more of the hardcovers with Black Mirror. Fantastic. We made that available again. It's great so. that they put it all into one yes. tight, complete story, one hardcover. It, it's fantastic. I got all the issues. Uh, but, uh, but that looks nice on your That show. book sold out like crazy, too. So if, yes, you, weren't, if you weren't there from the beginning, this is a way to get it. And uh, it's a great look, a great design book. Fantastic stuff. So with that... That is your Week in Geek. Go Avengers. Damn right.